Well, it's my pleasure at the present moment to introduce two young ladies who have really won uh, not only local fame and national fame, but international fame as two scientists in the raw. First of all, to my left here is, <laughs> is Rachel Brown, and then to her left uh, is Katie Vandersloot. Girls, thank you very much for coming out. You have set the world afire. Now tell us exactly what's happened, because uh, you, not only did you participate in the science fair, you won here, you went on to the nationals, and then when you won at the nationals, you were invi invited to the international. So first of all, Rachel, tell us about going from here to the national, and then I'll talk to Katie about the international, okay? Okay, sounds good. Oh, well, the, what a year we had last year. It was, it was very exciting. It was, it was full of adventure, and excitement, and fun, which are words that we always associate with science fair. So for last year at, at regionals, we, we've been, we worked in the lab back last year, I guess, in the beginning of September, and we haven't really stopped with this project. Mm -hmm. And so having worked for about roughly seven months before regionals last year, we, you always have some like nerves but excitement going into the regionals. And um, at, at the regionals, we did, like you said, we did place at overall for our category of age and grade, and that allowed us to go to, to Toronto. And for a couple of years now, like we had looked to, even like we have been to numerous national fairs, nice. but Toronto was the 50th anniversary. Wow. So they were mm -hmm. celebrating a very big year. Okay. So we looked forward to that, and we were very fortunate to go. So then, well, Katie, you ended up in Toronto, mm -hmm. and then you, uh, what happened there? Because you moved on from there, too. Yeah, um, in Toronto, we actually won the UNESCO Peace and Development Award. Yes, yeah. And that enabled us to travel to Slovakia for internationals in the summer. And we were ecstatic. We were so excited sure. to win that. Um, and getting there, as soon as we got to Ottawa um, to travel with the whole Team Canada, everyone instantly bonded. And we were like best friends for the rest of the trip. Good. And not only were we best friends with um, the Canadians, we became really good friends with some of the international kids as well. So it was a great okay, now, there, now let's get to the heart of the matter because <laughs> you have been, tell us exactly the, the theme of your, of your project because of people around Medicine Hat and whoever might be listening, this is quite interesting and, and exciting. So what is it? Okay, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we focus on a chemical called triclosan. Now triclosan is the chemical that's added to antibacterial products and it's not just in hand sanitizers and soaps. And that's where people may be already, you know, aware that it is in. But it's also added to a wide variety of products on the market, over 750. And, mm -hmm. and that was actually a study done back in 2001. And antibacterial products are very big right now with advertisement. Mm -hmm. So it actually far exceeds that now. And it's in things that you would never really expect. And that's where we really actually, in the very beginning stages of this project two years ago, we were very surprised. It caught us off guard because in these products, they're in things like children's toys and athletic wear and toothpastes and cosmetics. Well, there was a lot of pressure for a while to have anything antibacterial, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. And are you, are you trying to tell me that my nice little hand san sanitizer <laughs> here that I carry in my pocket religiously uh, so tell me, uh, now you can answer that question, Katie. Am I safe? Um, well. Well, I'm getting well, I analyzed here now, right? <laughs> yes. Um, this being one step, and Purell as well, and is an ethanol-based hand sanitizer. So lots of people say, well, when I'm going camping, or when I'm, they ask us, when I'm going camping, and when I'm on the airplane, what do I use? Because right. they always have their hand sanitizers with them. Right. But um, these alcohol-based hand sanitizers are okay. So that's what we suggest to people if they are traveling and they, need, they want to have that instant access yeah. to a hand sanitizer is to use the ethanol-based. And that, some complain that that dries your hands out more, but it's not the same. It doesn't have the chemical triclosan. Well, thank it. heavens, because for a while <laughs> I thought I'd be chastised by you ladies for having that in my pocket. Now, uh, again, coming back to this, the, the pressure on antibacterial things. Mm -hmm. So, so what, are you, what are you recommending to people? Because now you're going against the flow, the commercialism of antibacterial goods, in, right? Mm -hmm. Because athletic wear, you say, and, and the hand, the, some of the hand soaps and things like that. So what are you trying to tell us? 
Um, you know what? I think that everyone can go back to the old traditional hand soap and water. And actually the FDA has not approved that triclosan in these products has actually been proven to be more effective than hand soap and water. So they haven't proved that? No, they have not. And other scientists do suggest just using hand soap and water. So going back to my good old days when I was young, when they met my mother making lye soap, <laughs> you know, that I was safe then, was I? Was no, you, you're yeah. safe. <laughs> okay, so uh, so now you've done uh, you've done, been at our fair here, our science fair to Toronto, and then you've gone over to Slovakia. You're working on something else at the present moment. You're you're, you're asking the federal government to take a look at this. So tell us about about that. Are you you have a petition? I understand. I've read about this along the way. So, yeah, um, we've. Since, since actually Toronto and Slovakia winning the UNESCO award and getting the, some feedback from the public and judges and things, we really thought, they said, look at your results, you should really do something about this. Yeah. So we, we thought, why, why haven't we? And we, yeah. we decided we're going to start a petition and to ban triclosan from consumer items on the market. And it's actually um, an issue that will be brought to Parliament, not just by us, but it, it is an issue that is going to be brought to Parliament within the next couple of months from other sources as well. Oh. So we're really excited to see how that goes. Um, and we know it's not any small matter, but yeah, since we started it in September with our petition, we've been really lucky with the public to receive roughly 3,000 signatures that we wow. sent. Yeah, with um, LeVar. By, by the way, who, who else is, uh, is with you when, when you say others are going to be, be part of this petition uh, tabling? Well, not our petition, but David no. Suzuki is channeling okay, his so, organization. So is good old David. Yeah, he used to be around here. He used to come to the teachers' convention. He was a science speaker. Now he's just really? a, he, yes, he was. Yes. Oh, now, that's cool. That, that is so neat. I would like to say, oh hey, back in the day. That's right. I got a conference from him. Uh, he he, tra <laughs> he traveled around uh, being a speaker at one of our teachers' wow. conventions here. Oh, so now uh, you've got this going, but you haven't quit. You haven't stopped your your project just because. You're both in grade 12, you're in medicine at high, and you're at no. McCoy, but uh, your science fair experience and challenge <laughs> that you're doing, you're still going to work on that, aren't you? Are you coming in the science fair in oh, March absolutely. 24th? absolutely. We would not miss it. The yeah. science <laughs> fair is yeah. March 24th, March and our Kiwanis Club works with uh, the college, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we have that. Uh, it, it's been a, a great, uh, interesting thing for us because we see the greatest projects there. So. You're still going. Oh, tell us. We you're, are. You're we still are. Are working on it. What are you working on now? Yes. So we are actually working on the same project. Okay. It's still going to be called Trickle Send Double Danger, take two. <laughs> and uh -huh. what we actually are doing is advancing it, but putting on a, a more focus on the first two phases of our project last year, and that's being induction. So what we're doing this year is we, the major question that we got from many people at the fairs was, what is the concentration that triglycerin is in the environment? Like, right. do you know that triglycerin is in the environment? So this year, we have the methods from our mentor and his lab to test for triglycerin within the environment. So for the past month since this September, we've been taking regular samples of local water systems and creeks and ponds, as well as different stages of treatment plants, and testing for if there is a presence of triglycerin. And then the concentrations that we have been able to detect, we have applied to the lab setting to simulate what's happening in the environment to see if bacteria, through exposure to just triglosan, can at these concentrations that are found in the environment be linked to cross-resistance. So without giving away the secret, uh, have you found that the waterways and things like that have, tri have this in them? They do. Um, they, they do. They do. Good heavens. Well, it makes sense because 95% of the uses of triglosan, although Rachel listed a bunch that they're in, like shoe liners, uh, right. and athletic clothing, and others, 95% um, of them actually make their way into the water systems. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, when you make their way in, how do they do that? Through your drains, and you're washing okay. your hands. Okay, so that's, that's what's the, the end result in uh, yes. going down into the storm sewers mm -hmm. and the sewage system and gets into the water. Now, how, how are we going to uh, promote this even further? Because you've started on now, you've got a, got a petition, you've been talking, you've been interviewed along the way, and you're telling us again today, how are we going to promote uh, changes in the lifestyle, I guess you'd call that, of people in Medicine Hat mm -hmm. and area? <laughs> well, you, you, you go ahead and then Rachel will finish. Well, okay. Um, well, 
we're actually, when you say the city, um, I'm the vice chair of the Youth Advisory Board, and we're actually, okay, right. yeah, and we're actually in the process of making a document to submit to the Public Services Committee okay. and the city to ban triclosan from public um, facilities. 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 Okay, <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, public facilities. So that's how we're we're helping. We're hoping the the community can really get involved in making this change, and that would be the first triclosan community free community in Canada. So that yeah. would be really exciting, but. You've got Alderman Pearson all excited already, haven't you? <laughs> uh, so the, the, the big question is here, so uh, do you think that they're going to support the, the banning of it? And uh, what are they going to do? Make sure that whoever places soaps in, in the, the facilities around the city are, are the antibacterial, non-active, uh, but sure, right. right? Right. Well, you know, there are a lot, there are many products out there that don't contain triclosan. Okay. So, you know, one easy step is just not, whether it's in city facilities or just in all of our homes, right. is just staying clear of products that do contain triclosan. And then from there, also, you know, I don't think that citizens really want to be wearing clothes that have, or wearing shoes that contain this chemical mm -hmm. and being exposed to it and always having constant exposure to a chemical that can be absorbed into our bodies. So, but just tell me now, this, uh, this is a big order you're asking here. How are they going to tell, for example, mm -hmm. athletic goods or toys, because you buy toys for your kids, you have sho the liners in your shoes. Uh, how are they going to be able to check if they, if they check or go to a store or say, let's say a shoe store. And how are they going to determine that? Are you going to make sure that the, the product that's there says none? Right, well, um, actually, oh, sorry, <laughs> which one? <laughs> so legally, legally companies do have to, on their labels, specify if their chemical does contain triclosan. Okay. But triclosan also has other trade names. There's about okay. a half a dozen. Sure. So, as consumers, you just have to be very aware of what you are buying. So, for example, on certain shoes or clothing liners, it will say, you know, antibacterial or it will say, you know, mm. odorless and kills, you know, 99% or 0.9% of bacteria. Yes. And those, you know, your clothing liners are not going to have alcohol in them. They will be having chemicals in them. So, whether they're triclosan or they are similar chemical that are like ke the chemical structure of triclosan, you know, those are what you want to be staying clear of. Now, okay, now what happens, what about these companies that make these, these products? Are they going to try to uh, hijack you ladies and say, just a minute now, you're taking away our livelihood, our economic. So, so what happens, do, 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 have you heard from anybody at all along the way that they're a little uh, disappointed or upset that you're going on this track? We've definitely been, um, worn and just brought to not harassed, but warned, okay. <laughs> not not from companies themselves, but okay. um, we just we realize that it is kind of a, a touchy subject, yes. but we're not pinpointing any companies. Good, yeah. and I think some some companies are realizing that people are getting upset about this, right. so they're starting to take away their products so that contain triclosan. So they are they're actually learning from this experience that you have been telling people about. So they're actually doing that. That's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's the kind of a question, I guess, that I've uh, just always wondered. What difference does it make? And I presume you, that's what a scientist is looking for, because as scientists, you're going through this and say, I hope it makes a difference sometime down the road, right? So OK, now I'm, I've got all of this uh, lined up here, but people are busy. They're, They've had, they can't take this because, uh, in the, for example, salt, they say, yeah, well, don't eat too much salt. Or, uh, and the sodium, you have to read the labels on all of the foodstuffs and things like that. So these people are going to have to go there with a compendium or a dictionary and say, <laughs> I've got to watch for this, this, and the other thing. How can you make it easier for them uh, to, to help themselves, actually? And that's what it is, isn't it? It, it helps them. Uh, right, absolutely. So and uh, tell, give us some suggestions. I really think that, you know, in this fast-paced society yeah. and where everyone does really want to turn to, you know, convenience, you know, aside from responsibilities of, you know, as individuals that we have, but, you know, like you said, people are busy and, and they want things that are convenient. So it comes down to the responsibilities of scientists and advocators working hand-in-hand to you know, bring light and shed light on these truths that com you know that companies don't necessarily tell you, 
and hopefully we have hope that companies, it'll, it'll begin at where it's produced, that companies will stop producing uh -huh. triclosan products and that we can have that safety of turning to products that don't have these chemicals in them. So now your petition is going through LeVar Payne to the, the federal parliament and what would you expect there that they will then pass it on to the FDA and saying in some way that they should be uh, aware of this and, and help, help uh, get that message out? Well, actually, our petition goes through LeVar Payne to the clerk of petitions, the petition right. par like department up in Ottawa. And then from there, it actually gets visited by the House of Commons right. and by MPs. And LeVar Payne will be presenting for us once it gets approved. He'll be your advocate. Absolutely. And from there, we really hope that along with other independent groups and university teams and research projects, when the House of Commons sit down and they review all of these teams' research into this chemical, that they will, you know, understand that as Canadian citizens, more than just, you know, one team is concerned with this. Yeah. And then from there, I, I believe that it's up to them. Sure. Okay. Now, the other thing is I want to come back to the science fair because I've been an advocate of the scientific method for, for kids because you can solve problems in this world in your daily life. Tell us, uh, 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 Katie, you can take this one and just say, would you encourage young people from grade four onwards to, to get involved in this? Because look at this, You're, you people have done marvelous work and you've advanced mm -hmm. the science fair to such an extent. So how about encouraging other people all these kids in, the, in all the elementary schools in Medicine Hat and the surrounding area to get involved. Tell us how you're going to do that. Well, actually, um, funny you bring that up. Well, Rachel and I have, since grade six, have been involved in the science right. fair. And yes. every year since then, we've just loved it. And we have that passion for, for asking questions. And we really like looking into issues that are facing society today and what we can do about that. So we actually, this year, finally, have been going actually into schools and we've made a number of Oh, good for you. Yeah. Um, just hoping to inspire, I guess, kids yeah. to, 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 go, to work at Science Fair because you can achieve amazing things. And yeah. um, making it to nationals is, is um, definitely a good experience. And you meet a lot of great people. And you, you gain a lot of great mm -hmm. connections. So, and you have a lot of fun. So <laughs> we, we went in and we, we talked to the kids. And we actually have a small group. It's called Science Experience 101. OK. Of okay. kids that we're mentoring. Well, that oh, will, excellent. Yeah. Well, that, isn't that great? So thank you very much for that, because I think that's what we need to do. Uh, and you don't have to win. No. Because no. Just, just the exercise of, of uh, getting involved and things like that, that's just marvelous for the future. So thank you very much, Rachel Brown and Katie thank Vandersloot, for, for, for being with uh, And good luck on the project. Big. I'm so glad, you. by the way. You are safe. <laughs> no, I'm safe. Okay, you thank you kindly. Back to you guys. Walk up.